Classic Car and Driver is brought to you by Midas. We do that. It was 1979, and the pages of Car and Driver report a new sports car has arrived from Japan. It was the RX-7 from Mazda that showed up and started winning races and winning fans. Even though in the early years, hardly anybody understood how it made all those horses in that strange engine with the rotors. The Japanese-produced RX-7 owes some of its success to a German inventor, Felix Wankel. His bold new rotary engine design was licensed in 1961 to Mazda's parent company, where it was developed and tested for the small Cosmo sports car of the mid-1960s. It was later used in various economy cars exported to the United States. It was installed in the R100 and the RX2, 3, and 4. Later, Mazda came out with the Mazda RX-7 and redesigned the engine. Mazda recognized the overseas success of the Datsun 240Z, and to get their own foothold in the American market, Mazda knew they would have to come up with a genuine two-seat sports car, offering high style, top-notch performance, and quality, all at a low price. Project X020 began in 1970 and took seven years of research, development, and name changes before a presentable prototype called the RX-7 was ready for the public. Its performance and its $7,000 price tag made it a huge hit. There were stories that, uh, I mean, the car was almost doubling in price because people were so hungry for this car. I mean, you could sort of see why. I mean, it had a 7,000 RPM engine, which was quite exotic for the time. It made a great noise, and it also was really light and handled quite well. So they really kind of did their homework, and, it, and for that time period, nothing else was like it. Mazda made refinements to their popular sports car every year. By 1985, they had introduced better suspension, better braking, and a larger rotary engine. The Mazda RX-7 for the GSL SE model had the 13B fuel-injected engine. Uh, the horsepower rating on the engine is 135 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. It maintains a foot-pounds of torque of 133 at 2,750 RPM. The new power plant caught the interest of car and driver staff setting up a road test on the improved RX-7. I wrote the road test and went to the introduction for the, uh, the final most powerful version of that first-generation Mazda. And what they did was they just shoehorned a bigger rotary in there, only in this case, instead of boring out the cylinders, they made those rotors a little bit wider, and they went from about 1,150 cc's to 1,300 cc's. The power went up to 135, but the car was still small and light, and boy, it was a strong piece. Chubba wrote in his review that the RX-7 sings an irresistible song, begging to be revved to its red line and thrown into corners, and it communicates the joys of the sports car experience to its driver. But the big question was, how does the Wankel rotary engine work? It's a difficult con concept to get your arms around. I mean, we're used to pistons going up and down, and here's a, this rotary thing that's going around, and, and even the, the way they calculate the displacement is a little funny and hard to, hard to grasp because it's not, a, again, a, a cylindrical volume you can measure and so forth, so it's a head-scratcher. It has the same principles of a piston engine. A gas and air mixture enters the intake. The vapor is compressed until it is detonated by spark plugs. This forces the triangular rotor to move, pushing the exhaust out and turning the power shaft. The small size and high horsepower made the rotary and the RX-7 a favorite at the track. Mazda went to uh, Daytona with the RX-7 in the late 70s, and two of them, I remember this well, ran uh, running in the GTU class, then GTU class, GT under two liters, and they astounded everyone by finishing fifth and sixth overall, and of course absolutely dominating their class. And when there's racing, there is the aftermarket. 
The aftermarket products that are available for these cars, even 10 years ago, we were adding exhaust systems and headers and air filters. Today, there's a whole new avenue for it. We have companies that develop turbocharger upgrades, um, aftermarket exhaust systems that make the horsepower uh, sometimes twice or three times the original horsepower rating. Mazda ceased production of the RX-7 in 1995, mainly because they couldn't keep the price down. Not many customers would pay 40 grand for an RX-7. But Mazda is trying for a comeback with the new RX-8 to be released in 2003. So the Wankel rotary engine lives on and owes its survival to the classic RX-7.